You're watching Brockton Community Access. Mark Lindy, your host, and today we are covering the November 7th general election for Ward 3 School Committee. As you know, school committee is a very important race. I serve on a school committee at Southeastern Regional. This is the Brockton School Committee, and the two candidates that are running in Ward 3 are Mark D'Agostino, who is the current school committee member, and Steve Kelly, who is challenging him for the seat. Gentlemen, thank mm -hmm. you for being here. We appreciate thank it. You, Mark. Joining me today on my panel is uh, Shana Barnes, who has helped us out with the other election coverage. And usually you see her on the other side of the camera at a city council meeting, but she is uh, counting down the days to the end of her term. And uh, I think we have a new star of stage, screen, and television, <laughs> I, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so we will start right away with the opening statements. We drew the uh, numbers out of Jay's hat. Uh, scientific and all, and the first opening statement for one minute goes to uh, Mark D'Agostino. So I have my stopwatch ready to go, and Mark, are you ready to go? I am. Okay, here you go. One minute. Thank you, Mark. Um, first, I want to thank the uh, constituents in Ward 3 for giving me the opportunity to serve this current term. Um, it has uh, certainly been a, a lot of work, but work that I've enjoyed and look forward to every day. Um, so I'm, I'm appreciative of, of the opportunity and, and Hope I'll get to continue to do so. Um, so um, one of the things I think that I bring to the table is that I'm heavily invested in the community. Um, I'm a business owner in the community. I've got my family's been here a long time. And most importantly, I'm a parent. And I have a kid that's going to be going into my son Evan, into our schools in just a few years. Um, so this matters to me greatly, um, the things we're doing now um, to try and make sure that kids that are in and coming into our school system are going to have an excellent education available to them. So I hope you'll give me another term to continue that work. Thank you. I didn't even have to use the bell. There you go. Uh, next <laughs> up is uh, Steve Kelly. Steve. I'd like to thank Mark Lindy and Brockton Cable Access for having this debate. I find that uh, it's extremely important for the constituents to see and hear who the candidates are. And I have to congratulate Mark for a agreeing to debate. I think that to hear that there are other candidates that aren't doing so, they're denying the rights of their constituents to get the full story. I'm entering the race for school committee because I really found that I've been committed for 40 years to, for all my life, for helping people empower themselves. I bring to the table 40 years experience working for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in program development, program management. I've lived in Brockton for about 39 years. I've got two kids that have gone through the Brockton school system. I coached Special Olympics softball for nine years, and I found it one of those things that I enjoyed doing. Okay. Um, we didn't go over the rap cues yet. If you see anything like this, it's a rap cue, and if you see anything like this, it's a cut cue. Otherwise, it's the bell. So I will start the questions off. Uh, Shana and I will go back and forth. So Shana has the first question. Okay, thank you, Mark. And thank you, gentlemen, for uh, agreeing to debate. Steve is correct, you know, uh, with several of the candidates not agreeing uh, to share their thoughts and their positions with the constituents. I think that they're doing themselves and the city a disservice. Uh, so thank you very much for being willing to come out here and also being brave enough to put your names uh, on the ballot, you for a second time and you for the first time. Thank you. So, um, just in, in general, now, some of my questions actually will have to be, they'll be the same question, but they may be asked a little different uh, because you are the incumbent and you are a candidate. So my first question, um, and I, I don't know the order, but um, Mark, Mark will tell you the order. So it's, uh, when you answer Mark, it will be, what is your biggest accomplishment that you've achieved so far while on the school committee? And for Steve, it will be, what will you plan to focus on if you're elected onto the school committee? What will be one of your biggest missions on the school committee. Okay, and I'll go back and forth and we'll reverse the order every time. So we'll start with Steve for, for one minute. Okay, my major priority is seeing that Brockton gets the funding share that we're entitled to get. I think that unless we get, and that means we need to start going to the state house. You know, one of the things that I find ironic is that if you go back to the old debates two years ago, there was discussion about whether or not we would sue the state. And I find it ironic that two years later, we're still in the same debate. Part of what we need to do is go to the State House, meet with 
the powers that be, and bring our kids there. Bring Brockton students up to the State House, lobby the State House directly. You know, we have to take direct action. So funding is the priority. Thank you. Okay, and Mark? So um, I don't know if we'll get a chance to address the, it, the comments back and forth. Do we get to do that? or? Yeah, you that... guys can rebut if you okay. hear something that the other candidate says. I'll give, add another 30 or 45 seconds. Okay. But this question is particularly, what has been your, your greatest accomplishment? Yeah, so I think the thing that will impact um, our kids in our schools the most um, is uh, we've looked at the kindergarten start date and looked at the fact that um, we have the fall uh, birth date children going into kindergarten too early and looked at, you know, and we just looked at the curriculum and whether it was developmentally appropriate or not. And so the school committee voted to start to roll that date back, while also adding pre-K, slowly rolling out pre-K at the same time. And that's something that myself and two other committee members uh, were adamant about um, when we were approached by administration about rolling back that start date. We were adamant that if we're going to do that, we've got to offer something else. We've got to offer pre-K. Um, so that's something that is ongoing, and that will be rolling out in the next couple of years. Um, but I think that uh, offering pre-K in Brockton um, is going to be vital for our kids going forward. Thank you. Okay, so my question is, um, in terms of, of funding, and I'll, again, I'll, I'll phrase it so one is for Mark, mm -hmm. who currently serves, and the other is for Steve, who <clears throat> is seeking to make a change and, and serve. Um, do you think enough... Basically, on the question that Shana asked, do you think enough has been done for um, Brockton to receive its fair share of funding? I'll start with Mark. Absolutely not. Um, we're not receiving our fair share of funding. I think everybody knows it. This so-called economically disadvantaged factor that the governor came up with um, is clearly um, unfairly discriminatory. Um, my opponent mentioned the lawsuit, and that has been talked about for longer than two years. And... Uh, that is moving forward. Um, obviously, you can't get into details on litigation matters, but that is moving forward. It's something that I've been talking about since I first ran and something that I've been pushing uh, for administration to move forward on, myself and others on the committee. Um, the mayor put money in the budget this year to give us um, the initial $100,000 to move forward with that. Um, so that is moving forward. That's going to be key to helping us to get the additional funding that we should be getting. As far as I see it, um, the state owes us $18 million, in my opinion. Um, if you go through the current calculation of economically disadvantaged and you count all of our economically disadvantaged kids, that comes out to an additional $18 million that we're not receiving. Okay, Steve, um, do you think enough has been done to get Brockton's fair share by uh, the current school committee? And if not, what would you do different? No, I don't think they've done enough to do it. I think that we need to start direct action up at the state house with the legisl legislators first, because you know right now there's enough Democratic le legislators there to override any veto from the governor. So we take action there. You know, there was a group called Indivisible that started organizing to keep you know Obamacare alive. We should take tactics like theirs. In lobby, you know, get with our Gateway Cities partners, other, other cities, and organize. And then start meeting with the legislators up there. So they pass legislation. There's legislation on the table now to change the foundation budget. It's been sitting there. We need to start acting and get that passed. Okay, thank you. Shana, next question. The Diversity Commission uh, was recently reinstated, and they've had on their agenda for at least, I'd say, at least six meetings, six months or so, about um, the or one of the, the first tackles that they had or that they addressed was some of the issues of no black teachers in the, the classroom. And to take that a little, or very little black teachers in the classroom, and to take that a little bit further, um, I've noticed that there are very, very little uh, black male teachers in the classroom. Now, with the Brockton Public Schools being a predominantly of color school district, what is your position on uh, recruitment and retain, retaining uh, black male teachers for our kids? Start with Steve. Okay, I think that we've got uh, 
a problem with that other gateway sitters also are dealing with, you know, in terms of recruitment and retainment of um, lax teachers. But I think we need, you know, Brockton has to make ourselves a place that you want to teach. We have to continue the innovation that we've been having and are known for. I had the pleasure of serving on the uh, Dropout Prevention Council for 10 years during my early my career with the, with the state. We had Reverend Walker, we had Mary Baker, we had Louis Angelo on that committee. We developed new programs, and essential to that was having really good teachers involved in it. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at how we bring things like that back. It was a, a collaborative effort that had like 15 agencies to working together on education issues in the community. There needs to be community-based involvement that looks at making teaching an occupation you want to go into. And then once we get the teachers in there, we've got to make the salaries commensurate with their abilities so that we're able to retain the teachers. Okay, Mark, I'm going to give you a minute 15 for that. Okay. And so um, I agree we need to do more work on that. Um, we have a task force that has been charged with working on that. There are members of the school committee that serve on that um, committee. Um, and we're actually bringing in a uh, consultant to help with that work. Um, I would like to mention that three principals were hired over the summer, and two of them were, in fact, minorities. Um, so efforts are being made to bring more minority um, administrators and teachers into the district, um, and those will continue to move forward. Um, I fully support those initiatives. Um, but I think that as far as making Brockton a place people want to teach, our teachers love being here. They may not, a lot of them that I've talked to, of course, struggle with some of the working conditions with classroom sizes and such. But the, the ones I've talked to, they enjoy teaching in this district. So I don't think it's a question of whether we have teachers that want to be here. It's a question of having the funding to be able to keep them here and stop laying them off. Um, when, and so that's an issue that has to be addressed. And we've talked about the lawsuit um, that I mentioned earlier. So we've got to continue the work for diversity in our workforce, we've also got to continue to push for the funding that we need so we can keep those folks here working. Okay, for the last uh, three years or longer, I believe, there have been layoffs and recalls, layoffs and recalls, uh, union contract calls for, I think it's a May 15th deadline that the teachers need to be notified mm -hmm. about that. Um, in the past, people have gotten recalled. Almost 100% have gotten recalled. So people thought it was like the boy that cried wolf and it wasn't going to happen again this year. This year was very different. So I guess my question from, from Mark, who worked with the school department budget a long time because the finance committee is the committee of the whole and had multiple, multiple, multiple meetings. Um, is there anything you would have done different in terms of uh, the recalls or um, you know, having more administrators gone than teachers? I'm going to start with you, Mark. Okay. Um, I think one of the big frustrations I've had, and I have relayed this to administration and, and, and held them accountable for it, is that once we had made the decision to do recalls, to approve recalls, um, the lag time from when the school committee approves that decision to when the recall notices are going out. And I have a big concern about that for a few reasons. One, we want these folks to know that they, they have a job and they can come back um, before they go somewhere else because we're losing a lot of our best and brightest teachers to other districts because they don't want to wait. The other thing is that affects our so-called breakage numbers and that's a reduction in our unemployment cost which we can then use to bring back other positions or programs so that I feel like when there's a, a lag in the decision to bring teachers back and them being notified that they're coming back, it also costs us money that we then could have used for other things, and now we don't have that. Um, you know, I think that we, we scrubbed the budget as hard as we could for avoiding any, you know, making the amount of layoffs as minimal as we could. Um, and, um, you know, I know at one point, I think the, the superintendent felt that we had the budget situated and I pushed her for an additional uh, 750,000 in cuts to put some teachers back in and they actually came through with more than that. So 
Um, we push pretty hard to avoid it, uh, but again, I think that when we do make those callbacks, those notifications have to go out a lot faster. Mm. Okay, Steve, I'm going to give you a minute 30 on that. All right, I think that the whole issue of funding, again, it becomes the essential issue. And as far as sending back, sending layoff notices every year and then recalling people, maybe we got to work with the union to see if we can change that process collaboratively so that people are, you know, not given the notices, et cetera, and so that we're losing, not losing the teachers. Maybe I'm being, you know, but that's one of the things I think we need to do is do a collaborative negotiation on it. And again, we got to put pressure on the state to give the funding out, you know. We need to look at maybe alternative sources of funding, like pay for success bonds that have been tried in other areas. You know, we have a gateway to college program that was cut. That would be a prime way of funding, you know, getting funded through pay for success. We have the project grad program. Again, another way of funding through pay for success. Okay, thank you. Next question, Shana. Okay, uh, you gentlemen, in your opening statement, I was actually waiting for a few questions in to see if this was going to come up, but in your opening statement, I didn't really get a full picture of um, technically what qualifies you to be the school committee representative for Ward 3. Granted, you have been serving in that position for some time, but um, you, with this particular, you had challenges before. Mm -hmm. So with this particular challenger, what qualifies you to continue to serve um, as the school committee member besides having a family, having a child going into the school system, um, and also what qualifies you besides your community involvement and caring? Okay. We'll start with Steve. I bring to the table 40 years experience working on education affairs for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I worked as a program development specialist looking at education issues all across in gateway cities. I've been involved in education even before that when I was in college. You know, when I was in college, this is before the IDEA law, which required schools to educate children that were developmentally disabled. When I was in college, I worked with the Sacco Valley School for Exceptional Children, served as a volunteer coordinator, worked with the kids in this, in this college, worked at, with the administrators at the college to form a gym class for the students at the Sacco Valley School. I spent a lot of my career, I served in the Brockton Dropout Prevention Council for 10 years, working with community agencies. I put program together that f kept the Project Grad program going back in the 80s. Now, so I've got experience working with families. I've got experience working on education issues. So I've, I think that qualifies me for the program, okay. for the position. Thank you. Mark? Sure. So um, when I first ran before I had served, mm -hmm. um, as a business person, I bring budgeting and financial experience to the table, which is something that we truly need right now. Um, now that I've been on the committee for two years, I've gone through two of our school committee budgets in challenging years that there wasn't money to spend on programs. It was making difficult decisions about which programs we could keep and which programs we couldn't keep. Um, and that's my background as a business person, having to make those types of difficult decisions. Um, so I have brought and continue to bring the ability to do that. Um, and also, I've been involved in, in the schools for several years now, um, but I, I take this position to another level beyond just going to the meetings um, of being involved in each school um, and getting to know the PTOs and the PACs and building relationships with the principals so that I can listen to them about what they need in their schools and make sure that I'm advocating for those things that, that, that the school needs. Um, not to mention that I'm a former Kennedy Cougar, you know, I attended Kennedy School and um, so I, you know, know the district and the people in the area, um, but I think that the experience I've gained in the last two years more than qualifies me to continue. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. My question is the school committee functions as a team. There are seven ward representatives and they're is the mayor who's chair of the school committee mm -hmm. and is the administration. Mm -hmm. uh, being on a school committee myself, I know we all have to get along and be cohesive. Um, do you see any 
time that you would ever differ with administration. It, it, it does seem, in covering the school committee meetings, gavel to gavel like we do, that there's no dissension in public at the regular meetings. Um, I know you guys have subcommittees that are very active, and I know that there are uh, d d heated, not heated discussions, but uh, lively discussions <laughs> in subcommittee. So do you see an instance where you would act actually not agree with administration and take a position counter, or do you think it's important to just um, let the majority rule and um, support the majority decision? I'm going to start with Mark. So, no, I don't think it's important to support the majority decision. I think that, um, as you mentioned, our subcommittees are very active. There's a lot more debate in subcommittees. Um, and um, if you get to the main vote, the, the, the time to vote in the full committee meeting, and you're not comfortable with voting in favor of something, that it's your obligation not to do that. And um, so I have voted against, uh, in fact, the first budget. I was actually the only vote against it. Um, I still had questions. I wasn't satisfied with, with, with the way with uh, with it as it stood, and I'm the only person that voted against that um, that last year's budget. Um, so I, I think that there are other committee members who have voted against certain things in full committee meetings, and um, so we, it's not always been go along to get along. Uh, there certainly have been descending votes, um, and I, I think we've all done that when we felt strongly about an issue. Okay, similar question to Steve. I know you're not on the committee at the moment, but um, do you see uh, a need to agree 100% with administration or just support the majority to, you know, to, I'm not going to say go along to get along, but just to not have public dissension? I think it's important for us to have a stance that if we disagree with something, we let people know that we disagree. And we have an obligation to vote for what we think is right for our constituents. You know, if we don't think the administration's doing something correctly, we have an obligation to speak out. Okay. Well, that was a nice, quick 20 seconds. I like yeah. it. Steve just, I mean, <laughs> Jay just gave me the um, six-minute cue. So I want to um, give Shana one more opportunity, and it's going to be a quick, almost like a, I don't want to steal someone else's thunder, but like, almost like a lightning round, yes or no, or something that there's not a lot of elaboration on. Yeah, I actually have t three more questions, but they are lengthy, so I'll defer if you'd like the gentleman to, to go with the next part. Or um, I don't think we can do the ask each other a question. You, okay, you, well, you, I, real quick, I have like one. A yes or no. Okay. So, um, <laughs> because I, I want to know so much, and I think that people want to know. Um, okay, I, don't, I'm, I guess I'll just ask this. Okay, uh, to bounce off of Mark's question, seven ward uh, school committee members, would you be in favor or against adding at-large school committee members? Okay, that's a yes or a no. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with Steve. Yes. Okay, Mark? Yes. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. I was wondering that too, so thank you for asking that question because when they did North-South Zone, I thought it was appropriate to do a yeah. couple of at-larges. The Brockton School Committee at one point was originally all at-large and then it went to Ward because everybody got elected from one side of town. So right. now we have the Ward representation. So we are going to get to the closing statements right now, two minutes apiece. Uh, the way we drew it was the same way the opening statements happened. So we will start with uh, Mark D'Agostino. Great. So again, thank you to Brockton Cable for having this debate and to my opponent for uh, coming and debating. Um, and I agree it's disappointing that some folks were not willing to do so. Um, <clears throat> again, I want to thank all of my constituents for the opportunity to serve that I've had. I ask for the opportunity to continue to serve you. I think that I have um, served you well, put the interest of all of our children first, um, which is what the job of being on the school committee um, is about. Um, I've taken this job a step further outside of just going to the meetings and um, actually getting involved in each of the schools in Ward 3 um, as, and um, so that I, I think is an important thing that I've brought to the table that's different um, from some of the other, um, my predecessors um, who've done great jobs, but again, um, I got out there, got involved in, school, in the schools themselves. Um, I've held administration accountable, and they know that. And when I don't 
like what I see them doing or I don't think they're doing it in, in the right way, they hear from me, they know they're going to. Um, and I think that's an important role of the school committee as well, is to make sure that the administration is fairly held accountable but knows that they will be. Um, so I ask for your vote and the opportunity to continue to serve um, for another two years on the committee. And um, I, again, thank you for the uh, first term that I've enjoyed. Thank you. Okay, Hi. Steve. Okay. I'm Steve Kelly, and I'm running for school committee because I believe that education is the great equalizer. I bring to the table 40 years experience serving families of economically disadvantaged families. You know, during my career, I oftentimes dealt with issues that were due to students or, or clients I had not having a good ed education. You know, I'm an organizer. I know how to work with communities of all different types to get the common cause and get a job done. I ask for your support. And uh, I look forward to working as your school committee representative. Thank you both for being here and agreeing to debate. I think uh, the school committee um, is very important, obviously, for the children, for the parents, and for the community. If you have a good school system, you have good residential property rates, and people want to be here, which Brockton has always had a great school system. Shana, I want to thank you very much for being part of the panel. Thank you. Um, and uh, it's nice to see school committee slash city council cooperation. It's two different, not branches of government, it's the same branch, but mm -hmm. uh, to have everybody get along and work together so we can fund the Brockton schools properly. Um, keep in mind that uh, November 7th is rapidly coming up. Uh, the voter registration has closed. Uh, so if you're already in the system, you got to get out there and vote. We had a 9.5% turnout in the preliminary, which was not good. We don't want to just double that. We want to triple that or quadruple that and show them Brockton pride, boxer pride. So keep tuned to Brockton Community Access, channels 9, 12, and 98 for all your community information. And most of all, make sure you educate yourself about all the candidates and you go out and do your civic duty and vote. Thank you to my staff and crew, and keep watching Brockton Community Access.